Okay, a little bit of backstory here. We are developing here at Triplicate our Mean Green synthesizer, musical synthesizer, um, which is based around an STM32 uh, on a Nucleo board and the audio interface here uses uh, I squared S interface from the Nucleo, which is the three yellow wires. And uh, I did a whole video trying to get this working. And I could get it working with the I squared S in, in what they call blocking mode, which is pretty useless really. So what we need to use is the DMA. However, and if you look at this video you'll see I just could not get the DMA working. So I looked around on the web and I'm not the only one who has this problem. So I thought I'd do a video just of this DMA problem uh, for everybody who's not particularly interested in synthesizer design but um, wants to use the I squared S. Okay, here we are in Cube MX and for now we've got the I squared S set up but we're not using the DMA so let's generate the code for that and we've already got the project open so let's look in the project so here we are in the main function and if we scroll down um, just using a code switch for the DMA, which is disabled for now. Uh, so we write the GPI pin high, we transmit our buffer, and then we write the GPO pin low. Uh, and that's the whole loop, and it just goes round and round and does that. Uh, so should we see if that works? Okay, here we are, that's compiled and uploaded to the Nucleo, so let's start her off. Okay, that's working all right. The top trace is the load, the I squared S left right clock, which is just there to uh, show that it's up and running. And the bottom one is high when we're in the transmit function and low otherwise and you can see it's high almost all the time so that's tying the processor up completely so what we want to do is use the DMA okay back into CubeX and the DMA settings for the I squared S so we want to add one select not a lot of choice there and it comes up with some settings and for now we want to change that to half word 16 bits because that's the what the i squared s interface takes the audio interface um so now let us update the code projects already open so let's go into here okay so back in the main function I have this little code switch here which we will now turn on so now we have these callback functions we have a half buffer half transmitted callback a buffer full transmitted callback and an error callback and the important one here is the tr full transmitted callback clears the dma tx flag which is a flag i've created so we go into the main while loop and here we're now in the dma specific code so if the 
DMA TX flag is low. Uh, again, we set the GPI pop in high. We call the transmit DMA function. We set the GPIO pin low and we set the DMA TX flag. Uh, so that then stays high till the end of the buffer. And then it's cleared and we send another one. So should we try that? Okay, that's compiled and uploaded. Shall we run it? That's running. Let's see what appears on this scope. Okay. So firstly, no left right select, which means that the I squared S interface is not functioning. Secondly, it's going round the uh, it's going and transmitting every, I don't know, 20 microseconds. OK, and the buffer is 64 samples long and at 48 kilohertz sample rate, that's one and a third milliseconds. It should be coming around and re-triggering the DMA. So something is not at all right. So the idea of using the Cube MX and the HAL was so that hopefully I didn't need to spend days and days poring over data sheets looking at registers I could just set it all up and get on with writing the actual code for the application oh hum so let's see what the cube MX has actually written into the registers so I'm going to put a breakpoint here so we're the first time it calls the transmit so all the registers will certainly be set up by then run the code and that's stopped there so now we go in the IO registers and we look at SPI because the I squared S is simply an extension of the SPI and we look in there in SPI3 which we're using and here we are so there are values in the I I squared S configuration register and the pre I squared S prescaler register and those values are sensible I checked them against the data sheet so that's not the problem, which we didn't think it was because we knew the I squared S was working. So should we instead go and look into DMA, DMA1. Okay, DMA1 stream 5. The configuration register isn't set to anything it's in its reset state so it hasn't actually set up the dma to do anything which is why it isn't working so where are the dma registers supposed to be set well there's a mx dma init function there that looks promising and there it is uh, but it doesn't do an awful lot so I don't think that's it. Um, so how about the I squared S3 in it? It's the one that's using the DMA after all. So should we try? And here it is. It sets some values and calls HAL I squared S in it. Should we see what that does? Okay, so we just scan down this. It's doing a lot of I squared S setup. Okay, and this little line here, Hal I squared S MSP in it. What does that do? Uh, 
Okay, and here we are, and we scroll down here. Ah, HDMA. So that is setting some DMA values, and then it calls that function. So we get down here and it's actually writing to the uh, DMA configuration register. So is it getting there? Let's put a breakpoint in and see. Okay, let's go. And there it is. TMP is 2C40 so let's step and it is not updated the configuration register for the DMA stream so what's going on here okay so I'm a bit of a newbie on these STM32 processors and I guess any experienced programmer for them is probably laughing at me by now. Um, but we have here in the datasheet the peripheral clock enable register. Now it doesn't seem to explain clearly anywhere. It's just one of those things that seems to be so important and obvious that you might know. But for all the peripherals you need to enable the clock to them before they'll work and if you don't enable the clock they're completely dead you can't even write to the registers uh, okay so here we are and here are the dma enable ones so where is our dma clock enabled well if we go in here That's the one. Okay, so here we are. That is the one we're looking for. So we'll run it again. And here we go. And that is set at naught. And if we look down. Okay, and if we look here, SPI3 enable is turned on. So where is the clock supposed to be enabled? Well, if we go back into here and again experienced STM32 programs have probably spotted it. Okay, here's the MX DNA in it, and there indeed is the clock enable. But that function is called if we go back to the initialization, that function is called there after the MX i squared s3 in it which is the function that's trying to set up the dma so oh dear cube mx has got it wrong and it's never going to work so we are going to put that in there so let's compile it and run it again and see if that makes any difference okay so let's go so this is where it should set up the DMA so ah so we can see the DMA enable is one so we should be in with a chance here so stream 5 configuration register if I step that there we can see it now has a value in it so is that the problem solved 
we shall get rid of that breakpoint and it to run get rid of that breakpoint run it again and see what's happening and there we go so we can see here it's only in the transmit function for a very short time and we've got a nice clock left, sorry a nice left right select and so that's one sample is 20 microseconds of division or thereabouts which is about 50 kilohertz which is what we want 48 kilohertz so I would say that is working okay so there we are Ch connected one channel of the scope to the audio output uh, it's just outputting a a ramp wave just for test purposes so we're good to go and that was a day and a half's investigation and head scratching and data sheet reading to discover that so what do we conclude well the Cube MX is not perfect and has bugs in it uh, so at least I know that now and I can watch out for them and it is a bit clunky um, sort of function call to function call to function call just to set some registers up and I think the most important conclusion is on the STM32 peripherals make sure you've turned the clock on you've enabled the clock before you do anything so on that note I think I'll leave it so it's goodbye from triplicate home of interesting electronics uh, subscribe to the channel uh, please uh, leave a comment if you've got something you'd like to say uh, thumbs up perhaps and I'll see you next time goodbye